The September's bloody need starts right now! What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. Additional support is provided by Wathers Trains, everything you need to build a great model railroad. Check out their website at wathers.com. And by American Limited Models, the relentless pursuit of accuracy. Check out their website at AmericanLimitedModels.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for September 2021. I'm your host, Ken Patterson. And this month, we look at Gary Gross's wonderful layout and a layout tour, exploring his triple deck layout in HO scale. Then Dan Scheidel, our wonderful drone pilot, shares with us modeling ideas from above, where all of the bridges and all of the water scenes are what I really focused on in this video this month. If you can see what it looks like from the air, that's exactly what it should look like on your model railroad. Also in this video, I share with you how to create grass tufts using static grass and glue on wax paper so that you can place the grass strategically on your layout anywhere that you want it to be. Now, Wathers is celebrating 90 years in this hobby with the support of model railroaders just like you. They couldn't have done it without you. And let's help them celebrate by picking up the brand new Wathers 2022 Wathers catalog. It's absolutely wonderful. And as I always say, this is one of the most important tools in your shop because it's a go-to place where you can see everything that's available in the hobby and all the various scales. You can reserve your copy at Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois. Also, please check out the What's Neat This Week in Model Railroading podcast that we record every Saturday night with exciting guests, a lot of different various how-tos from time to time, new products, and all the other things that makes this, in fact, the best hobby in the world. So with that, let's continue on and watch the rest of this September 2021 What's Neat. For this segment of What's Neat, this is going to be a scenery segment. And today, we're going to experiment with making our own grass tufts that we can strategically put on a layout anywhere that we want, rather than simply use a static grass gun and put grass on the layout. I think this might be a more controllable way to do it. Now, we're going to start out by using simple wax paper as our basis, because nothing really sticks to wax paper and you should be able to peel off the grass just right. Now, Sill Floor has been selling grass tufts, like what I'm describing, for years, but they're very expensive. And what if we can come up with a solution that we can do at home by ourselves and virtually make these for the cost of the glue? I think that would be a wonderful thing. And it, you could do multiple colors and have quite an inventory of materials and grasses ready to go at any one given moment on your layout. So we're gonna start by using four different kinds of glue to see which type of glue works the best. I've got great normal Elmer's wood glue that we're all familiar with. I've got something here called Gorilla Glue in clear, which I didn't know they made, and I think that's gonna be neat to see how that turns out. I've also got the Gorilla Glue brand of household glue, which I assume is another variant of the Elmer's type of glue, white glue. And we're gonna try rubber cement. So I've got a piece of wax paper here, and I've written down A, B, C, and D on the paper so that I can associate each type of glue with the location that we put it on the project so we can identify possibly which glue works the best for our cause. Now I'm gonna use this static grass gun that I've been using for the last 14 years from Knock. You can find these in the Wathers catalog and they do work very well. Right now I've got Woodland Scenics uh, grass, static grass in it. It's called Static Grass Flock Medium Green. 
good. Now, the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to put the glue on to our wax paper. I also have a bottle of water, and this is not plain water because if you spray this water onto the wax paper, it's gonna bead, it will not spread. So I added Dawn dish soap to it so that it would spread out smooth and not bead up on the wax paper. And I'm pretty sure this is going to work because it works when we ballast and work with scenery on the layout. That's a lot of the way of how Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement works. It's got a wetting agent in it so the material spreads and soaks into the ballast rather than balling up on top of the ballast, which is what water simply does. So now I'm gonna take my Elmer's glue and all the various glues and put them on the first piece of wax paper and we're gonna use the short static grass from Woodland Scenics. So let me bring you in close so you can watch me apply the glues. So now what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to take our water and spray it onto our wax paper. And as you can see, it spreads smooth and it does not bubble up. I've got this glue from Gorilla Glue, the clear, and I'm going to put that on first. And I want to just do small drops, the smallest I can do. It doesn't matter what size you do. If you do a larger area, that simply means you have a larger plot of grass to work with. Now I'm gonna put on the Elmer's glue right next to that. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to use the Gorilla Glue white glue. Same way, two, three. This is a lot of glue. I'm gonna to try to make it smaller. I'm also gonna put it on the area where the water isn't on the wax paper, and let's see how that works as well. You need the water to conduct the electricity to create your static charge. And now the rubber cement, I'll put on the edges over here. This is probably gonna be larger plots of material. Yes, it is, I can see how this is going. I'm, I'm really glubing on the rubber cement, so those would be larger plots of grass. Now I'm gonna take the Knock Static Grass Gun, which is now loaded with the Woodland Scenics Scenic Cement. I mean, I'm sorry, Woodland Scenics uh, Static Grass. I'm turning it on and I'm going to, I'm using the open uh, screen to do this. You can also use a funnel that they give you to more or less target each weed, but it doesn't matter because anything that's not glued will come right off the wax paper and we can save back in the uh, container that it comes in. I'm gonna to touch the Alligator clip to the water, which will make our total conductivity of everything, including the area here. And let's do this. Now the grass is standing up and it's attaching to the glue. It's attaching actually evenly to pretty much everything. There it goes. Look at that on the white glue. That's really standing up good, big clumps. And now over to the rubber cement. And we're gonna simply let this dry, which will take about four or five or possibly six hours. Be patient with this. And now let's do the longer nap static grass that I have on hand to see if we can make longer weed tufts as well. For the longer grass, I'm using this 10 millimeter grass from War World Scenics. I made a video for them some time back for Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, so I've got this material on hand. I believe it's available from a company in Europe, in the UK. And this is, again, gonna be 10 millimeters, so it should stand up. We're gonna use the same, another piece of wax paper, mark the same, put our water on it. And then start with our glues. Again, the Gorilla Glue that is clear when it dries. I believe water, this glue is activated, in fact, by the water. That's generally how the other Gorilla Glues work that I use. <laughs> Elmer's glue, next. Wonderful, look at that. The clear, I mean the white Gorilla Glue, which resembles Elmer's glue as well. It really doesn't stick to the water very well. It has a different consistency of the Elmer's glue. And that's the purpose of this, to find out which glue lends itself well to our end result that we want to accomplish by doing this. 
And now the rubber cement. Now let's take our knock static grass gun and turn it on. Put the clip into the water so that we have complete conductivity throughout. Let's apply this. I'm using the screen again so that this larger 10 millimeter stuff will fall through. And it's not falling through that well at all. So I'm gonna switch over and I'm going to use the funnel, which I think will lend itself well better to this because the grass is longer and it really doesn't wanna come through that screen so well. The funnel is now attached. My, my clip is going to touch the material again to make sure we have conductivity. And here we go, look at that, that works. Oh my God, I just clumped out. In fact, it's not coming out that well at all. Not at all. Now, Okay, that's a fail. Just to give the 10 millimeter grass another try, I'm not even gonna use the static grass gun. Let's just take the balls of material and see if we can get them to stand up and attach to the glue. As I pull away, it should stand up if it attaches to the glue. Let's see if this works. It just might work. These balls are not gonna work, we know that. And now in the rubber cement. It is in fact sticking to the glue. And as I pull up, it pulls up very nicely. Without a static grass gun, it stands up because I'm pulling it away. And now let's switch over to the six millimeter uh, glue. I'm gonna spray it with water. A, B, C, D to represent each type of glue. I'm gonna load up the static grass gun with the six millimeter grass, which does not clump up at all. And I'm going to use the funnel again because I have a feeling that may work very well. Let's put on our glue in exactly the same way we did before. One, two. And notice this time we're trying it a little different to see how it works. We are not wetting the paper first. We're simply putting the glue on the paper and then we'll wet it. Again, vary this. That's the purpose of this video is to try different things to find out which thing actually works the best. And on this project, I actually don't know what will be the best. There's our white glue from Gorilla Glue and here's our rubber cement. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, all three glues, four glues, let's wet it for conductivity. Not sure if that's gonna work with the water ahead of time. <clears throat> Touching my clip, putting on the material. See how the funnel targets the material to a specific location? It's not a bad thing, that's a kind of a good thing. It still stands up. The rubber cement areas. Let's try it a fourth way. Let's try it with the six millimeter glue and wet it first instead of putting the glue onto the dry wax paper. putting blue tape on it so I can mark it A, B, C, D. B, C, D. We're gonna wet it first with our water soap mixture. Starting with the Gorilla Glue clear onto the water. 
Now the Elmer's glue next. The white Gorilla glue, which is marked C on my bottle here, so we can differentiate. This glue, it's hard to get small dots. It really, this glue really kind of holds together almost the thick consistency of white glue. And now the rubber cement. One, three, and rubber cement. I'm putting rubber cement on thick because rubber cement tends to dry and really flatten out and shrink. Static grass gun with our six millimeter War World Scenics ready to go. Touch it to the water area and let's apply it again using the Look at that. Using the funnel that comes with the knock gun. You can see how it really targets. That was a big clump that came out all at once. Let's further experiment by using the screen that comes with the uh, uh, grass glue gun. This is the screen, which allows the material to come through. It should work just fine. I don't need the funnel anymore, we'll put that aside. So we'll see two ways on this, funnel and screen, how what works the best too. Look at that, it comes out beautiful. It's standing up like it's supposed to. Let's do the rubber cement areas. Now that gives us a good even coat on this wax paper. The longer nap grass comes out slower out of these grass guns. It really does because it has a tendency to clog it because it's so much larger than the Woodland Scenic static grass, which is almost like a mowed lawn type of length of grass. The six millimeter is the length of the grass where if you haven't mowed it, it's time to mow. And so that's all four pieces of wax paper that we've tried now. Let's let this set, let's let this dry, and let's see how this turns out next. Okay, our weed tuft experiment has been drying for six hours. The first thing we want to do is dump off all of the excess static grass so that we can see what our end result is for each. I've got a trash can next to me. You simply pull it off. And we're going to shake these off in the trash can. All of the glue will hold the static grass that's attached to the uh, wax paper. And now I will pull the camera closer so that we can inspect each one of our weeds, the six millimeter, the 10 millimeter, and the Woodland Scenics, the stuff that we did dry and then put the water on and the things that we put the water on first and then applied the glue. And let's see how each one came out. Okay, I actually let these dry a little bit longer. I put them out into the sunlight so that the thick Gorilla Glue and the white glues and all the glues that were kind of insulated by the static grass would be thoroughly dry because if it's wet, it's not going to peel off of the wax paper. So I'm going to start with the short nap, the Woodland Scenics, okay? And we're going to start with the first glue that we used, which was the Gorilla Glue, the clear. And the plan is that this should just peel right off. And look at that, it does. If it peels off the wax paper, if it tears the wax paper, that's okay. And what we've got now is a plot of grass that we can put onto the layout, okay? I would prefer that there be smaller plots, but they aren't. The next glue we're gonna try is 
I've got it marked as B and that's the simple Elmer's glue. And I'm gonna try to peel that off, the wax paper. And that's not peeling off as well. In fact, I would call the Elmer's glue, here's, it's kind of peeling. I would call the Elmer's glue a fail, okay? The next glue we're gonna look at was the Gorilla Glue, that white Gorilla Glue that we had. And that is a form of Elmer's type of glue, but it's made by Gorilla Glue and that one peeled off good too. Let's check the rubber cement. I would say that the rubber cement is an absolute no-go. That doesn't work. Now, let's look at the six millimeter glue. The six, I'm sorry, the six millimeter um, static grass that we did. And again, all four types of glue will peel off the first one, which is the Gorilla Glue. And that came out absolutely just the way I want it to do. So I've got a tuft of grass there that's usable. Now we're gonna look at the second one, which is the Elmer's glue. And Elmer's glue is not releasing from the wax paper. So I would call that a fail. The next one we're gonna do is the Gorilla Glue white glue that we put on. And that one's not particularly up. Oh, here we go, that one just peeled off good. So that one worked, the Gorilla Glue also worked. The rubber cement with a six millimeter, it's a no-go, it doesn't work. <clears throat> now let's look at the 10 millimeter. Same thing, the Gorilla Glue's first, and that is peeling off absolutely fine. We've got not very good coverage, which is my fault probably, but look how easy this is peeling right off the paper, so that's good. Let's go to the white glue, the Elmer's. Again, this is a fail, doesn't peel off. The Gorilla Glue that has been peeling off well before, I'm having a difficult time actually getting that off too. Rubber cement, I'm not even gonna try it, we know that's a fail. Now the last piece is a piece where I did the dry application of the glue first onto the wax paper and then I went ahead and wet everything so that we have our static electricity conductivity. I'm gonna start with the Gorilla Glue. Look at that, it comes off perfectly, just like that. Again, this Gorilla Glue, this clear glue is working. I'm gonna try the Elmer's Glue. And the Elmer's Glue is peeling off as well. Now I'm gonna try the Gorilla Glue, which I got marked C, and that is peeling off very well too. So the dry application where you put the glue on first and then spray it with water seems to be the best way to go. I'm not even gonna bother to try to peel off the rubber cement. It does not work. So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna show you the application of how to put this onto the layout so we can strategically locate the weeds where we want them to go rather than just you know cover the whole area completely with glue and then static grass. Another thought would be you could take the longer naps, these longer uh, pieces of grass that we've got, the six millimeter or the 10 millimeter, and you can actually put different color ground foam on the ends of it and make flower patches. Say purples or reds or yellows, it might be a neat way to make small flower patches for your gardens on the railroad. So let's do the application onto the layout next and see how it turns out. Okay, I've got some of our flat grass tufts that we made, the little groups, and I've got some white Elmer's glue. And there's a portion of the layout here on the very edge where I've got a gravel work area. And let's put some of the grass right here. The other parts of the layout here is where I just put down regular Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement and then did an application of static grass, in this case, a short Woodland Scenic grass. So let's take the six millimeter glue, I mean, static grass tufts that we made, just put a little bit of Elmer's glue on there and we're just gonna glue them to the layout, simple as can be. Depending upon the size, you could probably cut these with scissors or a knife and make the dimensions and the size of the grass areas any size you want. Here's the Woodland Scenics short nap grass. If I wanna put that on there, I would just glue it just into place. Make sure it gets around the edges good so you don't have any edges appearing, which I'm kind of rushing and I wanna do it right. So let's just put it directly onto the bottom of the plant. And this would be one way to make your own grass tufts for your layout, as opposed to using commercially available products. Experiment with it. Try different other types of glue that we haven't used. Wax paper seems to work good. Are there other papers out there that things don't stick to so well? How would aluminum foil work? There's so many different possibilities. I just wanted to show you four different types of glue and see if this experiment would work, and so far it has. So that's this segment for What's Neat.
this segment of What's Neat, our first layout interview post-COVID. Thank you very much. I'm standing here with Gary Gross in this beautiful operator's layout. Gary, tell us what the name of this layout is. It's the Franklin Pacific Railroad. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you did design this from operation and it looks like multiple levels. Tell us about it. Okay, well, the idea was that to have something more than just running from 16 feet around and that's it. So uh, I came up with the idea of uh, two helixes, which we'll see later, and uh, three levels. The, essentially the railroad runs from the uh, staging area up to either the second or third level, depending on whether going east or west and then uh, comes back and turns on itself and goes back into the, into staging. So uh, a train uh, originating in St. Louis, for instance, would go up the helix to the middle level going westbound, comes around, goes up the other helix and turns around on itself going up, to, up on the top level, goes back and all the way down to staging again. That's amazing. It That's looks okay. like all of your switches are not manually operated. You've got a lot of electronics on this, don't you? I've got, I do. I have uh, uh, all of the top level switches are, are activated by these uh, little switches here, and I can't honestly remember the name of it. Bear Creek. They're what? Bear Creek. Bear Creek. Yes, thank you. Anyway, it's a, basically you push a button and it throws a switch. They're all, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I can't think of the tortoise. Thank tortoise? You. Yeah. So you have slow motion switch machines on yep. this. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work and a lot of wiring. Oh, yeah. About how long, how old is this layout? We started building it in 2002. We were operating in 2005. In the last five years, I guess, is when we put most of the scenery in. Now, tell me, Gary, how many people does it take to operate this layout? Uh, normally seven people. We have a dispatcher. We have two people running a yard and then four operators. Uh, and there are four switching jobs uh, in addition to uh, through trains that stop at Franklin, picking up and dropping off cars. Now I notice you've got some signals on this layout. Is it all fully operational with signals? No, the, the signal basically I have two of them uh, going into that, to the main helix. And the purpose of that is to keep people from going up the helix and uh, and having a train coming down the helix and we have this <laughs> <laughs> mid helix crash. So I put this, put the signals in there to prevent people from going down or coming up with a train opposing them. That's amazing. Now, how long does it take to operate? What, how long is a typical a, session? A, a session is three hours wow. and we uh, we run about 12 trains. Uh, and if we have time, we have a couple extras available. Okay. So, and I see a lot of Missouri Pacific and Frisco, so I know you love that. Well, yes, uh, I wanted to make sure I had uh, Frisco and Missouri Pacific included, but I also wanted my fictional Franklin Pacific. So the premise is that the uh, rains came and flooded uh, near St. Louis, the Frisco and Missouri Pacific bridges so, over the river. And so they are uh, in effect uh, running on Franklin Pacific trackage. Very cool. Now your scenery and your trees are beautiful. Tell me about how you did your scenery starting with the cliffs. Well, that's an interesting thing. Uh, the cliffs, and uh, if you want to pan around here and take a look from about here to over there, took two football games to put that <laughs> okay. that scenery in. It's a, basically it's a screen wire underneath there, and uh, uh, I took uh, rock castings, uh, poured it into the mold, let it harden a little bit, and then slapped it on her and held it up there until it hardened. That's very cool. Took Gary, forever. <laughs> tell me what, what brand of track do you like to use on this? I use uh, I use a Flex Track. It's for uh, microengineering. Yes, thank you. Yes. That's, that's amazing. We love those boys down in Fenton. They make some of the finest track that I've seen. Is this code what code rail do you code like? Code eighty three. The okay. the switches are all Shinohar or Walters Shinohar code eighty three track. This is great, and it's all ballasted. One thing I've noticed, and I do like to use these on my layout, is you also have a lot of chooch ground throws so that you actually have to be with your train to throw the turnout. That's exactly right. Uh, it's very important because we run with timetable and train order that you stay with your train and you uh, are sure you can, can move across the layout without hitting anyone and so forth. No, this is very cool. All of your structures are absolutely beautiful. I just see them wrapping around on all three levels. It's got to be an absolute joy for the gentlemen that operate with you. It's fun to operate. It's uh, not fun for me to, <laughs> to 
to put all these uh, buildings together. So most of them I purchased already made at what swap meets and so forth. But uh, uh, yeah, operations is my joy. That's awesome, Gary. Tell me, how did you get this passion for trains? <laughs> Well, when I was three years old, or four years old, I'm sorry, uh, my grandparents lived, lived in Pacific, Missouri, which has Frisco and Reserve Pacific going by. We were riding along the Frisco tracks one day, and uh, my dad happened to notice uh, this uh, fireman in the switch engine that was working the tracks. And uh, he said, uh, we stopped and they waved and all that. And that guy says, you want to bring the kid up on the, into the locomotive. Uh -huh. So here I am four years old, hauled up into that motor, that, that steam engine. And uh, my recollection is to this day, it was hot, it was dirty, it was smelly, it was big, yeah, and scary. <laughs> and we took about a half a mile ride down and a half a mile ride back and and uh, they, they let me out and I, I have never forgotten that. And uh, always since then, I love trains. Another thing I've noticed on your layout is you've got a lot of the schematics of the yards and the overstructure of the track plans. I can see them all around and I'm, we're going to be shooting B-roll and showing this. We probably are right now. Tell me, why did you do that? Well, it's important to me uh, and when I go somewhere else and operate that I know something about the geography of the layout and where the heck you are in the scheme of things. And I felt that that was important. Uh, in terms of my layout that anybody coming in, they, they pretty much can can see on the face of where they are and, and what town they're in and so forth. So I think it's important. No, I think it's it's a guide. It's very, very helpful for the fellows when they're running these trains. It's, it's amazing how thorough you are in everything that I see down here. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. So, I mean, one more thing I want to say is I see some of your backdrops are very beautifully painted. Tell us about those. Well, that's interesting. Uh, all, all of the backdrops are photographed except the one section over there. And uh, my brother painted that for me. I told him what I wanted and he sat down for about, I think, I think it took him about four days or four or five <laughs> days to paint that. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now I saw a lot of clocks around here because I wanted to ask you what time is it so I'd know how long that we're going. But these clocks aren't for telling time exactly, are they? No, they aren't. I have three clocks that are uh, fast clock okay. to a mechanism that, that runs the clocks, in my case, four times as fast as a regular clock. So in three hours of real time, we get 12 hours on the clock. Okay. And I have a timetable that is developed in 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 terms of the four you know the 12 hours but really three hours so three that's hours. that's a part of the operation isn't oh, it oh yeah the uh, tools of uh, timetable and train order is the timetable the clock your, your real or the clock sure. and and uh, any train orders that you get from the dispatcher what type of system do you use to power your layout uh, Digitrax okay. have that. We were one of the first uh, people in St. Louis to have a Digitrax uh, system about 1995. Very cool. Yeah. I saw a lot of that underneath the layout and it looks like you've got a lot of, I want to say, circuit boards and a lot of things that complement that. We have a, have uh, seven different blocks in, in the layout so that if you have a, a uh, short in, in a certain area, you can spot where it is by looking at the, at the uh, the circuit board as you mentioned and uh so you don't shut down the whole layout you only shut down a portion of it and easily find what the problem is another thing a lot of people wonder about when they're doing level double deck and triple mm -hmm. deck layouts like you've done this is a triple deck is how do you light underneath the decks and a lot of folks used to use incandescent light bulbs that were like christmas light bulbs mm -hmm. but i see you've done something a little different i use the, the uh um strip lights and uh leds okay and uh they seem to work very well they have a little tendency to droop every once in a while but so i have to keep them fastened I, up i think the color is great it really allows it's a, you yeah it's uh, the lights are the same way it's that real cool cool light that uh brings out the reds and, and brilliant colors and i like that a lot it's uh it really makes the layout shine Another thing you mentioned to me was that this layout has been in the model press through the years. Tell us about that. Well, we made the uh, NMRA magazine last year in, a, in anticipation of the, um, of the uh, uh, convention that was going to be here in 2020, which got canceled. Right. So we're looking uh, to have a, a, a lot of uh, the St. Louis layouts in model railroader and craftsman in the NMRA magazine 
uh, coming up for 2022. That's right, 2022 in St. Louis next that's summer. Right. Yep, that's going to be great. I'm looking I think forward so. to that. So am I. Gary, this is the best hobby in the world. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't want to say it's because of people just like you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Daniel Coombs, for running camera for us tonight. And Gary Gross, thank you very much for sharing this layout with the viewers of What's Neat. Well, you're welcome, and thank you for coming. <laughs> All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. Authors Trains, supporting hobby retailers across the world since 1932. Check out their website and learn more at Wathers.com. American Limited Models, available at your local hobby shop or online at AmericanLimitedModels.com.